Hey guys and welcome back to another Python tutorial. So in this video we're going to be creating a website scraper that's able to take prices um, data from Amazon relating to different um, different items and store them in a CSV file for us. So we can use this data for all sorts of things such as finding items that are of the lowest prices or of the best quality uh, based on our preferences. So we can look for items like toys, cameras, protein, or any other products that you're interested in. And our scraper should be able to get, um, so if we look for protein, for example, it should be able to uh, look at how many pages of data there is. In this case, there's seven pages available and scrape each and every product on this page along with the URL to the image, the price of the product and the title, as well as a link to the product in case we wanna click on it and purchase it. So that's what we're gonna be doing in today's video. Now, bear in mind, Amazon is a massive website and they probably have all sorts of measures to prevent web scrapers from, you know, utilizing the uh, network bandwidth, which could have otherwise been used by genuine customers. So to avoid getting rate limited or banned from Amazon, we're going to be using a proxy for the sake of this tutorial. And I recommend you do so um, whenever you're doing any sort of scraping um, activity. So the, there's a lot of free proxies out there, but they can't be relied upon because they might be down or they might only let you use a certain amount of data. So what I'm gonna go with is IP Royal, who have kindly sponsored today's tutorial. IP Royal is a proxy service provider providing safe, private, and unrestricted access to online information. With a pool of over 2 million plus reliable IPs, IP Royal allows clients to use a proxy server as an intermediary between their devices and the web, which, which allows clients to maintain their privacy and use resources they can't access directly due to geo restrictions, etc. IP Royal's data center proxies can serve as a great product for businesses or users looking for premium high-speed anonymous private proxies, which usually have unlimited bandwidth and no extra charges. For data scraping though, I would recommend using IP Royal's re residential proxies as they not only allow anonymity when scraping websites, which can help avoid in getting rate limited, but also let you select the geolocation of the proxy, either through the dashboard or by making minor changes in your code. Lastly, IP Royal handles automatic IP rotation, which not only allows easy integration within your code, but they also provide the option to use static IPs in case that you decide to keep an IP for a longer duration of time. In this video, IP Royal has provided me with a discount code that will give you guys a straight 50% discount on their Royal Residential Proxies. The code is Johan50 and I've also included a link in the description which you guys can use to obtain the discount. So guys, make sure to use the discount code before the deal expires or you'll be missing on a great deal. So, um, what I'm going to show you guys now is we have the IP Royal... Um, dashboard from where you can view the different um the different properties of your proxy so you can see the host port etc the only bit we're going to be interested in here is um setting up the country because uh we're in uk so i'm going to set up the country to be united kingdom you can put it up as random but i want products to be specifically in united kingdom so i will set it up as that and then the IP rotation, I actually want this to be random because I don't want Amazon to catch on to the fact that we are um, scraping data to their, from their site and for us to get IP banned. So I'll set it to random IP. I do not care much about this, uh, the regional state, so we'll leave it like that. Now, um, we'll leave this set up as it is and we'll come back to this later. What we're going to need later on is this bit right here, which is the uh, login credentials slash details of our proxy. So first things first, we're going to open a, um, I've opened a Jupyter Notebook file. You can open a Python script if you like, your preference. So I'm going to import Selenium, um, Selenium Wire. I'm going to import the WebDriver class from it. Then I'm going to import a beautiful soup, which will basically let us take, take the HTML text and convert, into, convert it into a browsable HTML object so that we can easily um, pass the content of our site. And then we also, for Selenium to work properly, um, we need a web driver for Chrome. So there's either Chrome, Firefox, as far as I can remember. So I'm gonna be using the Chrome um, 
the Chrome web driver. So I'm going to use the uh, web driver manager for Chrome. And essentially what this module does is it will check if you already have the Chrome web driver module installed and it will check the version and everything for you. If you have it installed and it meets the requirements, it doesn't do anything. But if you don't, it will install it and put it in the right directory for you. So it's pretty convenient. Now we're also going to need pandas. Uh, to do with all the data manipulation and just storing it as a CSV file because it makes it easy. And then lastly, I'm going to import time just to halt our program during certain moments. So let me run all of this. And if everything runs fine, that means we should be good to go. I will also be linking up um, a list of libraries for you guys to install using pip in the description for ease of use. So now that we have all the libraries installed, what we want to do next is I'm going to create a new variable called search term. And let's just start with, let's say you're hitting the gym, so you want to look for some protein. So the search term is going to be protein. This, this can obviously be changed to whatever you like, um, as long as Amazon has products uh, relating to the search term. And the next thing I'm going to do is create a new variable called scrape URL. Now this is going to be the URL that we're going to scrape from. Now what I noticed with Amazon is that um, you've got amazon.co.uk which is your main domain and then you've got the K parameter which is where you can put in the term that you're looking for. So all of this can we can we can get rid of and if you look for protein, P -R -O -T -I -N, enter, it will come up with all the results for protein. If I change this to uh, cameras, uh, it should come up with cameras. So what we're going to do is copy this link and chuck it in here. So essentially, this is the link that we're always going to be scraping from. The only thing that will change is the K parameter, which is the keyword that we're looking for. So we'll change this into we'll change this into an F string, and then we'll replace the keyword camera so it's not static into the variable search term. Oops, search term. Now every time we change the search term, uh, it should be embedded in here. Now we will also create an empty list uh, in a variable called data where we'll be storing all our data that we scrape. Cool. Now that's all the basic stuff done, all our variables ready. We now need to set up the proxy that we're going to be using to scrape data from the website, basically covering our back at this point. So I'm going to create a new variable proxy equals and now we go back to the uh, IP Royal um, dashboard. And then you need to copy this URL right here. It starts with an HTTP and probably ends with a port number. Mine is 22323. So copy that, uh, chuck that in here. And that's basically your proxy that you're going to be using. Now, along with this, we also need, uh, we need to create a dictionary, which is going to be used by Selenium as the configuration for the proxy. It needs to have a key called proxy and then another sub dictionary where we need to do, put the HTTP proxy address and the HTTP, HTTPS proxy address. Now, luckily for us, it's both the same. So it's going to be the same address, this one for both HTTP and HTTPS. We're just going to pass this options object to the Selenium driver in a moment so that it can know uh, what proxy to use while scraping the site for us. Now that we have all our proxy details set up, we're going to create a variable called driver, which is going to be the Selenium driver. And then what we're going to do is we're going to type in webdriver.chrome. Now webdriver, as I was telling you guys before, all it does is it installs the relevant webdriver for us. In our instance, we want a Chrome webdriver. And then we do Chrome webdriver uh, manager dot install. Uh, and basically what this is going to do is it's going to provide the Selenium uh, Chrome um, method with the correct web driver and it will make sure that it's installed and put in the right path as well. Now along with this we need to provide the Selenium wire options which will essentially just be the options objects we created up here. In our case we only need it to be configured with the proxy details and that should be good. So let's run this and hopefully everything should run fine. Okay, cool. So everything ran fine uh, and that should be good. Now, the next step that we want to do um, or the next step we want to take, actually, I'm going to move this to a different cell because it opens up a, an instance of Chrome as well. So now that our driver is ready, essentially, we've got like a human that's ready to do the actions that we want it to do. So we're going to say driver.get 
and then we'll say scrape the URL. And now essentially what we're saying is we're telling Selenium to go to this site and open a new Chrome instance while doing so. So while I was uh, telling you guys about how the URL works here, we also need to focus on another thing, which is uh, Amazon has multiple pages with items. So in this case, there's 20 pages of cameras. And if we were to scrape just this URL, we will only get the first page of data, which is uh, okay because it's the most relevant items, I guess, but uh, sometimes you may want all the data. So you may want to scrape all 20 pages. In that case, what you can do, and what I've noticed with Amazon is you can put an and sign and put a page equals one. If it's page one, then it just automatically gets rid of it. But if it's anything more than page one, so page two, for example, you press enter. And as you can see, the results have changed to page two. And we can prove this by going down here. You can see it's page two now do page three results have changed again and if you go down here we're on page three and we can do this all the way to the last number which is 20. We'll obviously have to scrape this from the website to find out how many total pages there are so our program can dynamically adjust the number. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say we're going to uh, our driver to get that page plus an and sign uh, and page equals one so that we always start from scraping page one. Now I'm going to run this real quick and I'll show you guys what the output looks like. It take a bit longer than usual because we're using proxies. Um, so let's give it a second. And I have a new tab that's opened up for me here. Uh, hopefully it should come up with the link. As you can see, it's come up with the protein because we've looked for protein up here and it's got page one, which is amazing. Exactly what we need. Now, the first issue we're going to notice is that in order for us to actually get to the data behind this, we need to get rid of this prompt, which is asking us to accept the cookies. So we need to use Selenium um, and tell it to click on this accept cookies button so that it can get rid of this whole prompt. Now, to do so, all you need to do is find the class of this button. So you need to right click inspect and then right click inspect again. And then you can see it's an input because obviously when you hover over it, it's highlighted and then it's got an ID. You can either use a class or an ID, but ID is more, more uh, better because it's usually unique and not shared by multiple elements. So I'm going to grab the ID of this. It's SPCC accept. Let's copy that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go into our code and we're going to put a try and accept clause because sometimes the prompt for cookie shows up and sometimes it doesn't. So if it does show up, we will click it. And if it doesn't show up, we'll just pass. We won't do anything about it. So we're going to say driver dot find element by CSS selector and the CSS selector for IDs is hashtag. So we're going to put hashtag and then paste the ID in there. So what this is going to do is going to find the button by its ID. And then all we want to do is click that button so that we can get rid of the prompt. Now we will accept any exception that happens, which is most likely going to be caused if there is no element with this name, uh, which means the prompt hasn't shown up. And in that case, we don't really care. We'll just pass. We won't do anything about it. And we need to put as here. So that's that bit sorted. Now, what we want to do next is once we've clicked on the button, we want to basically Essentially, when we've clicked on this, I'm going to grab all of the uh, all this code that you see on my right hand side. We want to grab the process version of it so that we can extract all the so that we can extract all the items and their prices and all the other good stuff from the page. So what I'm going to do now is uh, use the beautiful soup library to create a new variable called soup. We're going to take uh, initialize the object beautiful soup. And then we're going to do driver.page source. Essentially, this will give us the raw text version of the HTML code, which will then be passed into a beautiful soup object down here. Now, if I print this out, it will look like gibberish, uh, but it will be browsable HTML code that we can use um, functions like find, find all, etc., to find specific elements using beautiful soup. So I've got the prompt shown up here it's clicked on accept as you can see you can close this now and we can see that this soup has printed out obviously we don't need to look at this because it just looks like a bunch of gibberish at the moment it will make sense after some time 
So the first thing we want to want to do from, from this page is grab the amount of pages there are. So we want to know how many pages there are up here, in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to inspect this element right here. Inspect, just so that we can find out what's going on. Inspect. And then we need to basically find the parent so that we can essentially grab the whole thing. And as you can see, when I hover over this class right here, S pagination strip, it selects the whole thing. So the bingo, that's what we're looking for. And then we need to select the last number from it, which is 20 in, our, in this case. So I'm going to grab the class name. And what I'm going to do is say pages equals suit.find, suit.find. And then it was a spam. Uh, and the class was pagination strip. I know it's a span because it's the element type. It's a span and that's the class. So that's the, now that we've found the pagination strip, which is this entire thing right here, we want to find within it the other spans. We include, if we look at the other spans, they include the numbers. So we need the other spans. So I'm going to do dot find all because I don't want to find just one. I want to find all of the spans within it, which have the numbers. And I'm going to do dot find all. And I'm going to say span. So just find me all the spans within it. Now, I'm not going to run this entire cell because it's going to run beautiful uh, the whole uh, Selenium driver again. So I'll just run it here to show you guys what it looks like. And we run it. There's nothing special. But if you, uh, what you'll notice is uh, the last element of this array has the number that we're looking for. It has the last page number, which is seven. It's exactly what we need. So in, in this case, there's seven pages when you look for protein. So let me just prove that by looking it up. Protein and hopefully, yeah, there's seven pages. So it's correct. Now we just need the number itself. We don't need all of this rubbish. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to say new variable last page equals pages um, minus one, which should essentially give us the last element of the list. Now, when I print up large last page, it will include the whole span and everything. We only need this section of it. So it's just the text. So we're going to do last element, just the text. And now if we print it, we've got a string number seven. We don't want it to be a string because we want to be able to loop using it. So we're going to convert it into an int by surrounding it with int and casting it into an integer essentially. Now if you look at it, it's a nice integer as we need it to be. So we're going to copy this code and paste it right here. Perfect. So now we also have the last page and we know how many pages uh, we need to scrape through. Now essentially we just need to loop over and every time we loop over we need to change the page to the next page until we reach the last one. So. Um, I'm going to write the loop. It's a simple for iron range loop. So we're going to start from page one uh, and go all the way to last page, which is whatever the number here is. So the, whatever the total number of pages is plus one plus one so that we can account for an extra iteration. Otherwise it will stop one early. So what we need to do next is essentially find the uh, container that includes all of these products. So we don't care about any of these things on the left or the headers or anything like that. We only care about all of this stuff in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is just quickly go to the top product, inspect, and let's take a look if we can find the container. Uh, so I have already uh, scraped the site beforehand and found what the class name was. Um, actually, instead of getting the entire container, we just need to find out what each one of these uh, sort of blobs are called. So what each item um, container is called. And if you know what each item container is called, we can just grab all of them um, using beautiful soup. So if I see here, the div with a class of a section, a spacing base uh, includes all the data that we need. And if we go to the next one, also has the same class name, if I'm not wrong. Uh, hold up. So we go to the next one. Should also have the same class name uh, and the same data that we need. So essentially what we're going to be doing is grabbing all the divs that have the class name A section A spacing base. So that's what we will do. Uh, in the loop, we're going to say items equals 
uh, sweep.findAll, and we're looking for a div, oops, looking for divs, uh, with a class of a section, a spacing, base, which are all the items that we need. Now, once we have run this, we're going to have to take a look at what we find within this items, um, within this items list. So I'm going to run this outside of this cell because otherwise we'll have to once again run the selenium scrape and grab the soup again, which is going to take a while. So since we already have a copy of the first page, we can just print out items. And I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but this is essentially all the HTML code behind this one blob right here, it's just this product. We just need to extract the stuff that we need, which is the image URL, the text or the title, and the price along with the URL to this product. So let's start with perhaps the image. So the image URL, let's inspect the image. And as you can see, it's just an IMG tag. And what we need from it is the SRC. SRC basically has the, um, the URL to the image. So if I click on it, you go straight to the image. Now that's what we're going to do. We're going to extract the image uh, with the uh, yeah, we're going to just extract the image from this div. So I'm going to say, oh, go up here. Uh, I'm going to say, full item in items. Also, I just realized um, it wasn't just one product. Actually, it's all of those products within a list. That's why the code is so long. So we've grabbed all of those products each one of this individually is within that list. So we're gonna do it with uh, each item. So we're gonna say for item in items, what we want to do is we're gonna grab the item image and that's gonna be equal to item, which is an individual item, dot find, and we wanna find an image tag and we wanna keep the SRC from it, which is essentially the link to the product. Now, if I break right here and print our item image, we should have uh, what should be an image from one of the products. It may be a bit different to what you see on your screens because uh, Amazon likes to shuffle up the products that you see, but um, it should it should uh, resemble what your scraper sees. So that's the first sort of uh, image that we've grabbed. And we can, if we let it run, it will do it essentially for all the items that are in that div. So that's page one. And we've got the item image for the first container. Now we want next, what we want next is the item price. So I'm gonna look for the price, let's just inspect here. And you've got, uh, right here is what we need. We have uh, £43.95, we want the whole thing. So it's a span with a class name of A off screen. So I'm gonna grab the class name and I know that it's a span. So I'm gonna say item price equals item.find uh, to span. And then also have a, we know that the class name is A off screen. So we don't want the entire span. We only want the text from it, right? So what we want to do before that is also make sure that there is a price stated because some Amazon products are weird. If they're second hand and stuff, they don't state the product price. You sort of have to uh, ask for it or click and go on the next page. So we're going to check if there is actually a price on it. So we're going to say if item price uh, results in none, which means there's no price found, uh, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to set item price to NA. Okay. And if there is actually a price on it, oops, I forgot the equal sign here. And if there is actually a price on it, then we will overwrite item price with item price dot text. Essentially, it will just keep the text from the spam and giving us the item price, right? So I will print the item image now and under it, I will print item price. Let's go. So as you can see, we have the item image and the item price. Perfect. So we have two of the things already. Now the only two more things are the item title. So the name of the product and then the item URL. So the link direct link to the product if we want to buy it, for example. So to get the title, let's take a look once again, what we need to do. Uh, this is the title. So I'm going to expect the title and let's go in one more step. Uh, and essentially what it is, is it's a span um 
it's a no sorry it's a anchor tag up here with the class of a link norm OS underline text etc so let's grab the class name and all we want to keep from that is the text we don't want the uh, url so let's go back to code vs code and we do item title equals item dot find uh, it was an anchor tag oops i'm doing this before the break which is why it's pissed okay dot find anchor tag and the class i need to copy so let's go to the site and the class for this was that a link normal and all that other gibberish let's go back uh if we paste it in here and uh, now we should um, be able to just do dot text on this to just keep the text from the anchor tag because that's what we need and if i print now print item title it should hopefully there we go come up with the um title of the product so it says amazon brand amfit nutrition whey protein powder 1 kg strawberry 33 servings beautiful and if we look at the image it should hopefully correspond to that title as well so let's look at the image look at that amfit amazon fit uh, whey protein 33 servings perfect now the last thing that we need is the actual url to the product so when we click on this it open and open it in a new tab we need the url to this so it's the same thing again in the same um, this anchor tag right here also actually contains the URL to the product so instead of keeping the text we'll keep the URL here so we'll do copy the same line paste again item URL is going to be equal to item dot find anchor tag same thing instead of doing dot text we're going to keep the src attribute src basically is the uh, attribute of the anchor tag which tells it where to redirect the user to so that's the link so let's just print it out and let's see what we get uh item url um src kiera src Okay, that's a bit weird oh sorry it's href not src my bad so it's href not src now what we will notice is that we only have partial we have the partial link we don't have the whole link it's missing the https amazon.co.uk at the start here so if you try to paste this onto the web it's not going to work but instead if you added if you go to if you added amazon.co.uk and then pasted it and then gone uh, you can see the actual product so we're missing this first bit here which we'll copy and append, append to our link in the code so let's go back and where were we okay here so we need to add it to the start of the link so i'm going to add that in make sure you don't add the last forward slash because it's already included um, in the end link so we're going to add this uh, to the missing uh, missing URL and we'll run it again. And as you can see, even VS Code has recognized it now as a URL. So if I copy this last link right here, should be the link to our product. If I copy and paste it, voila, we have um, the link to the product and all the data that we need. Perfect. So essentially, that's all the data we're actually going to need. Um, and at this point, all we need to do is store this data within a uh, the data the data list that we made or the data array that we made. So how, how, the way we save that is we do data .append and we're going to append an a dictionary, and the title is going to be item title. Oops. The price is going to be item price. The image URL is going to be item image. And lastly, the URL is going to be the item URL. Cool. So essentially, that should give us let's if we run this again, what, should we, what we should get is a data list should have one item in it, which should be a single dictionary, and the single dictionary should contain all the information about one product, which is exactly what we want. Now, if I were to stop this loop from 
breaking and I'll run this whole thing for a second view data again we have basically all of the products on the page one of the protein page which is amazing now all we need to do is chuck this into the other loop that goes through all the pages and we should be good to go so I've copied all the code and we'll go back up here again we paste it here uh, and we need to tab this forward once because we're inside a loop here now we have appended all the data that we have uh, what we want to do after essentially after this loop is finished that means that we've finished scraping all the contents from one of the pages and it's time to move on to the next page or just finish the program so we're just going to do a time.sleep of two here and then what i'm going to do is driver.quit just to uh, free up all the resources that the previous scrape was hogging so you don't want to be building up on this uh, in terms of letting it eat up through your RAM and stuff. So we're just going to close the driver. And what I'm going to do next, what I'm going to do next is open a new instance. Um, yeah, open a new instance of the, of the driver again. So copy these two lines. And in the new instance, what we're going to be doing is uh same essentially the same code for initializing it but instead of page equals one we have to change that to page equals and plus uh the str because we need to convert this to a string i plus one so plus one because in the first iteration of the loop this is going to be one uh and we obviously want it to be two as soon as it hits here so this will essentially get the fresh data for page two and now we need to uh, do the same steps in here. So copy that, paste down here. Uh, essentially, we're just clicking on the accept button of the cookies. And then finally, just do the soup variable again as well. So this is going to be the soup for page two, page three, and so on. So one last thing we can also do is along with our data we can save the page number from where we got the data because we have access to obviously the i which tells us which page we're on so if i put a comma next to url where we're appending the data and put in page um, and then i that should basically in our data tell us which page the data belongs to so that was a lot of coding hopefully uh most of it made sense um i will try to run this now and hopefully it will just run first time which is a bit of an ask but let's see run run, run and run okay uh still waiting for selenium to pop up with the window here it comes loading so we're looking for protein we're on page one okay still loading I will probably end up uh, fast forwarding this bit in the edit or cutting it through um, until we get to the last page here we go it's closed one of the instances and it's opened another one and as you can see the page has been set to two because it's now scraping from page two all the items are different it's done page two it's probably going to open another instance in a second for page three here we are page three now obviously there's ways of making this process way faster by using multi-threading um, where you don't have to wait for one process to finish for the others to start you know multiple running at the same time depending on how many uh, threads your cpu can support um, and obviously feel free to do that because you're using proxies as well so there's uh, you're very unlikely to get banned for doing it quicker because you're using random ips and stuff so yeah, feel free to look into multi-threading uh, if you would like. I have tutorials on the channel, so I can link them in the description. Looks like we're scraping currently from page five. So two more pages to go, and we should then have the entire um, data set ready. Okay. Page six coming up now. So far, no errors, which is a good sign. Page six. And then the last one should be page seven, after which we can just convert our data array into a data, a pandas data frame and save it as a CSV file, which you can do whatever you want with. Of course, you can analyze it, use it for other products or use it to stock products to see price changes, etc. Okay, that was the last page. As soon as this is closed, we should 
hopefully be ready to look at the uh, data that it's collected. So anytime now. Okay, done. Perfect. So that's the script finished. It's basically collected all the data in 2 minutes 15 seconds, which is not too bad, I would say. Now let's look at the data that we've collected. Uh, let's see how many items are in there. 430, which is not bad. Um, pretty good number. So we'll create a new variable called data frame equals that to pd.dataframe. And then we're going to convert our data array into a pandas data frame, which will look like a nicely formatted table, something like this. Now we have obviously the title, the price, image URL, URL, and page number. And now you can obviously just save this to a CSV file. I will call this uh, something meaningful actually. I'll just call this uh, Amazon data scrape keyword. And I'll change this to an F string so that we can obviously put the keyword search term here. So search term dot CSV set the index to false. In the setting index to false, just make sure you're not have, uh, having an extra column, which is just useless in the, just the index of each of these rows. Basically like this column. We just don't need that, so I'm setting it to false. Let's run this, and hopefully I should have a CSV file waiting for me on my desktop. Let me check. Um, there we are. Just open it for you guys. Here we go. We have the title, we have the price, we have the, oops, don't need it to be that big. We have the image URL, we have the URL to the product, etc. And we also even have the page number from which we scraped it, which is just amazing. Now, obviously, feel free to do whatever you'd like with this data. So there's over 400 products that we've just scraped within the time of like, <sighs> Through two to three minutes uh, in this case, so it's a pretty powerful tool. Hope you guys hope I've been able to help you guys out. If you guys have any requests for new videos, please let me know. In the meanwhile, if you guys could share the video uh, and like, it would really help. Uh, and I'll see you guys's beautiful faces in the next tutorial. Peace out. <laughs>